Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Church Mag and I have another unprogrammed episode for you guys. If you haven't seen the unprogrammed series, we get five minutes of unedited footage to talk about whatever we want. So here we go. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about women in church technology. I've actually been talking about this a lot, whether in the back channel on Church Mag, on social media, um, some podcasts I've been doing, a devotional that I'm coming out pretty soon, where I talk about how women are engaged in church technology in this entire process with diversity. Now, before we get into it too far, first of all, let me say that I've been starting this conversation actually at the beginning of the year. One of the things I wanted to see in 2016 is not that we fix this thing that I'm going to be talking about here in a minute, but that I want the dialogue to begin in this process of what does women in church technology look like and is it need some, something that needs to be corrected? And so this is actually something I had talked about two months ago, almost three months ago, that I wanted to see done better. And Further, this is something that doesn't start just with church technology. Silicon Valley in the past few years has been having this conversation about diversity in general with minorities, with women in technology field. And one of the things that almost every single church uh, co company within the technology industry have found is that they need to have that diversity to be successful. And so once they had established the fact that this was something that needed, the fact that if you have a, a group of white men in a conversation talking about a product, you're not going to have a whole lot of diverse products. And they may think about a lot of great things and they may have the highest SAT scores and be able to really discuss that, but then they're all having a group think and they're all thinking the same thing. And so if a barrier comes up in this process, then they are feeling overwhelmed, they can't get past it, and so let's just give up in that process. A diverse group will be able to bring in a whole bunch of influences, cultural backgrounds, experiences, and all these different things that they can think outside the box and get around this process. And so it's not just the best SAT score, the most experience in this process, but actually diversity in and of itself can be such a huge thing. And so we look at all the tech companies out there that have CEOs that are not a minority or women. Marissa Meyer is a complete outlier in this process. That you look at the board of trustees, that you look at the ability to just have entire groups of leaders that are not diverse. And what is that doing to Silicon Valley? And for me, the thing that I take away from all this isn't the the details of this because that research is beyond me, the psychology of this process I am not representing because I am not the authority in this process, but that Silicon Valley is having this conversation where church technology has yet to address it. Now let me, let me be very clear, there is a lot of women that are speaking into church technology. I know a lot of different women that love to just discuss how to do church communication really, really well. If you go online, you will find a lot of them speaking a lot of beautiful and wonderful things that the church can learn about. But then we look at this process and just like Silicon Valley is having the question of, is it our fault that this is happening? Are we hiring or is it actually the university's problem because they're just not finding a lot of diverse groups and they're trying to get just people that's going to pay the tuition. It's really their fault and not our fault because we just don't have a good population to pick from. And a lot of people are calling BS in that process, that it's actually the people that are hiring, it's their fault in this process. And that we need to start establishing what this means for us. And so we have women in church technology that are having these conversations, but then I want you to look at some of the church tech blogs out there. Look at the top 10 list of how many people are being represented that are women in this process. How many people are diversity, have, are a minority of not white Caucasian? men. And if you look at those lists, if they're all of the same type of people, are we doing a, dis a disservice to this process? I'm not asking people to completely throw away their convictions or their theology. I'm not here to get into that process because I'm not your pastor. I'm not your professor to talk about in seminary on this. But what I will say is that there is a problem and I'm willing to to stand up and talk about it. I'm not here to preach at you. I'm here to talk with you. I want to have a conversation. What does this mean for you guys? And let me also be clear that I am a white Caucasian male that has very little in the way of barriers to this process. And so I would rather foster a conversation than be the person that is the spokesman because I have very little experience, but what I can say is I'm very empathetic and I'm very concerned about this for church technology. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Is this just a whole bunch of baloney? We shouldn't be worrying about this. Or is this actually something that's a problem? 
do you know women in church technology that have a voice but probably are not getting recognized like they should be? And where do you stand with this? Are you willing to support women in ministry? Are you willing to take the extra time to promote them in this process so we get diversity and do the best for the gospel because we want to see the gospel shown in every single light? Or are we not are we just overblowing this process? Are we taking this too far in this? I want to hear what you guys have to say. So leave your guys' comments down below. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.